The Bear, Season 2, Episode 10, Thoughts. This episode is indeed called The Bear. Final episode of Season 2 of The Bear, The Bear. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything bear-related up until this point. And, uh, yeah, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So, yeah, we open on just, like, a close-up of Sydney, Sydney's face as she's going over, you know, a lot. And... Then the camera turns and we see the restaurant and it is just completely packed and yeah, very nice, you know, really reminded me of the the flashback episode of this season, which, uh, hold on, was called Fishes, episode six of this season, you know, starting on, you know, in, in that episode, it was several people, but then, you know, we move in to the place, and it's it's full of people. And, yeah, really love this long take, and I like that the camera rested on Claire, not Richie or Kelly, during the conversation, so it's like, you know, she's, yeah, she's really happy to be there, she's so happy for, for Carmi's success. Which makes it all the sadder later in the episode when she hears how he feels. Which was a very classical, like, American ongoing show kind of thing. It just, you know, I shouldn't even be with name of woman. And then, you know, we see, oh, she heard that. Just, yeah. The show, in some ways, is very original. In other ways, is not. And very sweet that Sydney's father gets soda. You know, he's like, I don't actually drink. I'm more of a soda guy. We are well aware of that, sir. You know, and in comes the, the wagon with all the sodas. So what are the odds? 75, 25. 75 that she shows, 75 that she doesn't. And, yeah... Marcus yells at Sydney on account, you know, yeah, he's, he's still hurt, you know, and it did not exactly, yeah, and, and, you know, I, as far as I can tell, she wasn't intentionally ignoring him, there was just so much going on, you know, but, you know, in his defense, it is true that he did, say it several times, uh, and she didn't respond. And and then Carmi yells at Sid, and they also are able to, to calm things back down. And then Carmi gets stuck inside the walk-in, because... Um, what was it, Tony? Terry. See... Fuck, that's why this is a this that's why this entire problem is he doesn't pay attention to the details, you know? And the the little text clicker thing just spits out more and more really fast. And then at one point it just one of them says fuck and one of them is it's like FML or something like that. Just Yeah. And yeah, I think the long take is like twelve minutes long. Very, very cool. It's the new world order. And, let's see, yeah, and Carmi basically breaks down inside the refrigerator. Uh, by the way, I'm putting two links to videos in the description box that are specifically about this show, and, you know, they're both great. The one from The Take actually talks about this episode, uh, in, in part. And... Yeah, Pete spots Donna standing outside the restaurant, smoking, even though it's really fucking cold out there. And, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis gives just a heartbreaking performance. You know, like she did in Everything Everywhere all at once, like she did in the new Halloween trilogy. 
you know, like she didn't scream queens. Okay, maybe not scream queens, but she's she's delivering really great acting in in all of these, and I'm so glad she's still acting. And yeah, you know, she won't go in, and she doesn't want Pete to say that she came. It just really really rips your heart out. And we see they did manage to do the thing in five minutes. Just you know, yeah. Just in time. Is that meth? Barely. I mean, I think that is very important to, to say to the authorities when you end up in front of a fucking judge, dude. And, yeah, you know, Marcus is like, I, I think I have to fire you over the... Dude, you are being so weird right now. Um, Josh, I think that means that it's more than just barely meth. You are sounding ridiculously paranoid. And that is one of the things that, stuff like that, the effect that, yeah. And, you know, he goes to, Marcus goes to Sid, so I, you know how things have been a little weird between us? I think I know how, it can, how we can make it better. Can I fire Josh? Oh, no, he's, he's fucking gone. And yeah, and yeah, Claire asks, you know, is it okay if I go, you know, back? Is, is this or would this not be a good time? And like, oh, this, uh, this is not a good time. And because they're fucking idiots, the fucking facts, jagoffs they are. Of course, they blab about the walk-in fridge. You know, oh, he's he's with Java. He's solo. Han Solo. Just, wow. And she ends up just going, okay, what the fuck is going on? Tell me the truth. And then we see that the clicker is still clicking, but there's no fucking paper in there. So they're missing several orders and just, yeah. And, yeah, Carmi talks about his relationship with Claire, and Claire hears and is understandably upset. And here Carmi thought that he would be able to do absolutely nothing from the fridge. He was able to fuck up his personal life. Just, you, got, you gotta, you know, you gotta find the, the positives. And the, yeah. And, yeah, Richie... And Carmi have a shouting match from across the... And I really appreciate that they, they have, like... The, the camera shows both of them, despite the fact that, like, there's no geographical way for the camera to show both of them. So it's obviously a fiction for the... But, but yeah, it's, you know... And, yeah, they're both airing out their, their grievances with each other. And then Carmi's listening... To Claire's voicemail, hearing just how badly he fucked things up. And yeah, and the the a guy shows up to, to cut open the fridge and like so this is the first time? Nope. And Sid's dad gives her a compliment, and we see that Marcus has been ignoring or or possibly, I guess. Maybe he only just now saw that, you know, the the his father's nurse has been calling. So yeah, you know, basically he chose the the restaurant over his father, and yeah, you know that that really is like the. So he chose, you know, the restaurant over, and Carmi chose. Although he, you know, he didn't mean to to tell Claire like that. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. But yeah, uh, really excellent episode. I really look forward to the. Yeah. Uh, one. 
the the featured review of this episode says it's verging on soap. Write out all the big dramatic moments on paper, which I won't do because spoilers, and it would sound like a standard e issue episode of General Hospital. And he does also say he fucking loves the show. But... Yeah, too many crazy coincidences, too many melodramatic breakdowns. Every character is pushed to the extreme. Yeah. Um, let's see. Right, and and um, someone put that all walk-in fridges have an immersion, emergency release button on the inside. Carmi could not have gotten stuck in the first place, which I believe is accurate. Um... Yeah, I'm looking forward to the the third season, and, you know, yeah, this is one of the, those cases where the, the second season was as good as the first. Uh, I really appreciate that, you know, they, they realized what a, what an asset they had in Sugar, so they brought her you know she she appears in much more of the the show that i mean in the first season she was like there were several episodes that she was barely in at all you know she doesn't start out involved directly with the the restaurant like you know obviously she has debt due to it just like the others do but she's not working there you know and yeah this season she's there all the time um let's see. See. Yeah, uh, I mentioned in an earlier episode, and when yeah, an earlier video on the show, on you know there was one episode where Richie finally got to really kick ass again, you know, really be be very useful, and I really appreciated that because a lot of season two he wasn't this episode as well, you know he took charge with Carmi gone, at, at least some, and yeah he really nailed it. I think that might be about what I have to say. So yeah, I, I'm not, you know, like like when season one ended, I'm not 100% certain what's going to be the big issue next season, but I kind of appreciate that. I, you know, I like... And it's apparently something newer shows are doing. I, I'm really, really glad. And not, not all, sadly. And, you know, apparently Netflix is still doing this fucking thing where, you know, a season will end and it's like, well, shit, we gotta have another season to know what happened and then it'll be cancelled and we'll never get closure. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate the the way that they're ending both of these seasons that it's like, I mean, it seems like that, you know, season one ends, you know, they're, they're talking about, we have all this debt, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this work? And the season ends with them finding all the money that uh, Mikey had, you know, uh, that he had borrowed from Uncle Jimmy. So, you know, when you just watch that, we kind of assume, oh, you know, this means that they can just give him back the money. And then they just have to get the the original birth working, and yeah, there's a, you know that should be fine. And then this season starts, and it's like, oh, but what if we, you know? So yeah, by the end of this season, yeah, their first night went really well. You know, there's, you know, if hypothetically, but I know that they they are. I'll just real quick. Uh, season three of the bear. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. I could have sworn I saw somewhere say that they really want. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, it would make a lot of sense if they put out a season three. Certainly, um, they definitely can. What's the word? Um, 
you know, the fact that day one of the big restaurant goes well does not mean that all of the, you know, there could still, <clears throat> there could still be problems. And I think that might be what I have to say. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't think of something like two seconds after I stop recording. So the... Um, yeah, you know, this season felt bigger than the first one. You know, the, the both seasons are very intense, but this one added on more stuff that had to work, had to be resolved and, and such. And the... let's see... Yeah, I... Uh, I I'm... I felt the, the thing with Ibrahim, you know, being overwhelmed and taking, you know, yeah, kind of disappearing on the rest of them, and then coming back and telling Tina, you know, I, I do still want to work here, and, and yeah, I, I thought that worked well. Marcus figuring out desserts by going to Copenhagen. Yeah, I I thought that worked well, and the yeah the the relationship between Sydney and Marcus. Um, I think that might be about it. So, yeah, that is it for this video. There will be. Yeah, as as soon as as soon as season three hits Disney Plus, I will do videos on it. And yeah. Um let's see. Yeah. And until then, I am just gonna go make sure that my walk-in fridge does have a release button because that is not something that I am interested in experiencing.